Hi there, it's me, Egil Thorson, and I have a cautionary tale for those of you who have little girls and daughters, and uh, I remember as a child, and I'm sure you do as well, you know, you put on clothes and they say, oh, don't get them dirty. I remember well, I was given a pair of long trousers and threatened with all kinds of things if I got them dirty and I fell over and made a hole in the knee as well as my knee and my late mother went berserk and this is a story of a similar vein so let's go back into the midst of time and there was a little girl called Mary it's a nice name I remember it well because that was my mother's name and I had a girlfriend at one time called Mary and she was a typical little girl with the nice ribbons in her hair beautiful golden hair, blue eyes, and she was a chirpy little soul. And her mother said, Now listen, Mary, you've got your best dress on. You get it dirty, and I'll kill you! A little over the top, I would have thought, but, you know, everybody's got their own way of parenting. And so the little girl put on a satin frock, and she did look the picture of beautiful children. And she skipped along the road. Hello, birds. Hello, trees. Hello, Mr. Jenkins. He was just a man walking round. And she walked around and she saw her friends there. Hello, everybody. Oh, it's little Mary. Doesn't she look nice? Oh, yes, that lovely satin dress. And skipping away down the road. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And various other childish sounds. And she walked along. And she saw a crow in a tree. Hello, Mr. Crow, <coughs> said the crow, which is crow for hello, just for those of you who want to know. And she saw a little ginger pussycat. Hello, little ginger pussycat, meow, said the cat. And thought, I'm better looking than you. Cats are a bit bitchy at times. And she walked along and there she saw a little dog, <coughs> which is, hello, darling, looking smart. Oh, hello, little doggy, And she stroked it. Don't get my dress dirty. Mummy will kill me. How many times have we heard that? And off she went. Now it so happened. She thought, I'll take a shortcut across Farmer Giles' field. Not a good move. As she walked across, it was just in from milking. And I used to live on a farm. And cows, as you know, have very little bowel control. And they find the slushiest, gloopiest mud. And poo-wee, what a stink. And she's walking along. And they, she stood by as the cows went by. Hello, cows. Moo, said the cow. And as he did so, the hooves went in a puddle. A shower of muddy water. And other things which, best not spoken about, are very smelly. They come from the rear end of a cow splattered all over her face and dress. Oh my goodness, look at me! I'm covered in poo and mud! Mummy will kill me! Boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! And the cows went on. And she went along the road, crying her little eyes out. And she saw Mrs. Miggins. What's the matter, little girl? Oh, I've got poo and mud all over this lovely dress. Mummy said she'd kill me. We can't have that now, my darling. Come with me. And so it was. Mrs. Miggins washed her face bright and clear, put her dress in the tub, put some soap in, and woof, 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 cleaning all the you-know-what out of it. She hung it, wrung it out, hung it out to dry, and then ironed it. Good as new, my dear. Thank you so much. And she put the dress on. How can I ever thank you? Think nothing of it, my dear, think nothing of it. What a nice looking little girl. And off she went, doopy 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 doo, down the road. And she thought that was a lucky break. Phew, imagine, mother would have gone absolutely crazy. I know her, she's, she's my mother and I love her a lot, but uh, she does get a little over excited at times. You know, and uh, the idea of her killing me doesn't approve. And on she went. You'd think that she would have learned her lesson. Even, you know, perfidious youth, it takes a time. But threatening, having 
death sentence on you would tend to make you a bit more aware. Little Mary, she was very pretty, very nice, but um, she was a few pots short of a, a, a dinner service, if you get my meaning. Because off she went across another field, full of sheep. Bah, said the sheep. Pardon? Bah, that's what sheep do. And on the sheep were minding their own business, doing what sheep were doing whether it was working out the number of times they could recite pie from memory or, oh, that piece of grass looks nice and green. You know what it is. Those of you who know sheep, they're not the sharpest tool in the box. <laughs> but again, thank you, Bragi, but again, you all know what goes in has to come out. And again, it had been raining the day before and it was a slushy, muddy field. She'd already got her shoes dirty and uh, she thought, oh, I'll just make my way through there to the main road. I'll soon be home. Splosh! These sheep were kicking up mud and poo again. Oh, goodness me, I'm covered in all this kind of second-hand food. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. The sheep went, bah, bah, as do sheep do. She thought, Mummy is only exaggerated, she won't do anything. And went into the house. Look at the stink you're in, you horrid little girl. What did I say to you? Oh, Mummy dear, Mummy dear, don't, don't, don't. I walked across the field and the sheep covered me in poo. I don't care. What did I say? You'd kill me. Too right. And she had a big knife, bigger than this. And she got the little girl by the head. I'll sort you and slit her throat. Blood gushed out all over the floor. Not only is that, you're making a mess of my kitchen floor, you horrible little child. I should have got rid of you. And her head came off. And she looked like a, a turnip. The look of disgust on that girl's face was something else. But she took the head, hung it up in the cellar. What she did with the body isn't recorded, but there were some very happy pigs on that farm for a few months. <laughs> anyway, or as I say in Bell, put any road up. Dad comes up. All right, but look how you doing. I'm all right, how are you? Oh, I've had a hard day. Uh, and what's for dinner? Nothing you mind. Nothing for you if you bad. I uh, see that's as cheerful as ever. Miserable old woman. Anyway, he sat down, took his boots off, rubbed his feet. Oh. I hope it's somewhat nice. And uh, fire's going on, I'll get some... No, I'll get the stick. I'll get the... No, I'll get the... This went on for quite a while. Anyway, the old lady had her way. Got some sticks. And they sat by the fire. The man lit his pipe. Clouds of blue smoke. Do you have to smoke that rotten thing? Oh, yeah. It hides your ugly face from me. Oh, I could have married... I wish you had one well had. You miserable old woman. Anyway, he ended up going down and saw the little girl's head, Mary, her head hanging up by her plaits. Oh, my God. What's this hanging down here? It's a sheep's head. Is it? I ain't got my glasses on. Ah. What are you going to do with it? Make some broth. Oh, so they went to bed. Next day, early morning, the man walks off to work the old lady cackling away <laughs> stuck the little girl's head in a cauldron boil away you little swine i could have got rid of you at least you're doing something now that's worthwhile you miserable little girl <coughs> and the bubbling away the head was bobbling away chopping up carrots turnips or swedes depending on where you're from and a bit of herb oil in there, put some tarragon and some chives. A little horror. I don't like children. Thanks to you, I got married to that miserable old man. Anyway, she made some dumplings with some flour and salt. Yum, yum, yum. The old the man comes in from work. Hello, misery gods, how are you doing? I'm all right, you modern swine. They had a very close relationship. What's for dinner? I could tell you, but I'm not gonna. 
Uh, brothy, I'll get up then, you nick, you run swine, I hate you. And I hate you double, you rotten woman, you. Hey, oh, this taste is really nice. Hang on. This tastes like little Mary. Where is she? Um, ah, she stuttered and hummed and hard. Ah, oh, she's staying with friends. We ain't got any friends, thanks to you, you miserable old cow. And with that, he drew out a big, uh, he drew out an axe. With them, the old lady's head rolled over like a tempting bowling ball. And that's how he discovered the terrible case of the satin frock. Of course, it didn't take Sherlock Holmes to work that out, but uh, poor little Mary ended up in the pot. And let's face it, the father got rid of a very disagreeable wife. And the local people were rather glad of it. So anyway, parents, next time your child goes out and you threaten them with it, just you bear in mind little Mary's poor, to poor story. And... Uh, Take care, because if you're a little girl with a satin dress, it could happen to you. Is that my squeaking? No, it's Mary's ghost. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it. If you have, please press the subscription bar and bell. Uh, maybe you'd like to leave a comment. We love your comments. It does take us a while, especially in these troubled times, uh, to reply, but we will do that replying so yeah uh, leave us a comment there and uh, maybe you'd like to subscribe as i said earlier but uh, anyway that being said i hope you've enjoyed the story i've enjoyed telling it because i'm a big exhibitionist and remember you know stay safe and make the world a happier place bye elementary my dear eggle wolf